Now that the Atlas is in, it's time to come up with a bracket for these shifters. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken, thanks for coming along today. Um, where I left you off last time was I was getting into making that bracket for my Atlas shifters and um, I've had to do a lot of figuring and thinking about how I'm gonna do this. I've never, I've never done anything like it before. So it's kind of a new experience for me. I think the shifters that I have probably aren't optimal but I'm gonna make them work because that's what I've got for now. Maybe sometime in the future I can come up with uh, some better shifters, maybe a better system, but this is what I've got right now and I've gotta make it work. So these shifters that I got from Advanced Adapters, uh, like I said in the last video, originally intended for a Jeep XJ Cherokee, I believe, um, and they probably bolt right into there, but not into an FJ Cruiser. I had to cut off a big chunk that was back here, taking up a ton of space. This is where the automatic transmission shifter sits. So that's this is the amount of space that I have to work with. These shifters are gonna sit up kinda high, um, especially this one, just because of where I had to route the, the cable. So um, it may not be the most factory looking install when I'm done, but you know what, it's gonna work, and um, that's that's what's important. So let's see what I can come up with. I've got this nice big 3 16 sheet of steel to work with. I think 3 16 should make a pretty um, sturdy bracket for these shifters. I'll be using my Prime Weld Cut 60 Plasma Cutter. I haven't used it very much, so that'll be fun to kind of learn the ins and outs of uh, using the plasma cutter. Got this first plate done right here. It slips onto here, almost like it was made for it. And then I've got four bolts that go into it, and those will hold this plate to this set of shifters as part of the bracket. On to the next step. See, I'm not afraid to show you my mistakes. That turned out pretty crappy. So I'm gonna grind that off and uh, try it again. That 
looks a lot better. No huge gap in there. Advanced adapter supplied a top plate for the single shifter, and so I just use that as a template for my bracket. So what that means is that now I can bolt my bracket to the top of this shifter. Look at that. These uh, threaded bolt holes already existed in, in this shifter here, so I just had to follow the pattern on that one. Oh man, those welds shrunk a lot. Those little tack welds. Look at that. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. Let me, uh, look at that gap between there now. Holy smokes. I gotta do better than that. There we go, that's better. I just tapped this, uh, opened this up a little bit with a dead blow hammer just to knock it back a little bit. I'm gonna have to figure out how to, uh, not have this thing bend up on me when I finish welding it. Well, you can kind of start to see the shape this thing is taking. Look at that. That's kind of how it's going to sit in there. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to bolt it together here. Oh, I can't stop moving anyways. I'm going to bolt, the, bolt this together here um, so that these two parts come apart from each other and I can install it easier that way. And um, and then I'm just going to create some connection points on the tunnel itself. But that's essentially what it's going to look like in there. So now that this is taking shape, uh, it's time to create the bolt up interface between these two halves so that this piece bolts onto that piece. What I'm going to do is weld a piece of um, quarter inch steel on back here and then have the bolts go through this piece and into that piece of quarter inch steel. And just like that, I'm ready to do some welding. So that's on there now. And then that, this mounting plate is gonna weld onto the bottom of there so that I can bolt this up, kind of like that.
All right, well, it's coming along pretty nicely. This is how it goes into the vehicle. Um, yeah, look at that. Fully assembled outside the vehicle, bolted together right here. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. Next step is to take these. These are gonna be the feet that attach to the column uh, or the, the tunnel of the, the vehicle. So those are gonna go right in here about like so. Um, and they're gonna be welded into the vehicle and then bolted onto the bracket. So I need to drill some holes and get some threads on these so that uh, my bolts can go into them and I can bolt this thing up. side done one foot done if you will so that's gonna sit down on the tunnel just like that I'll get this in there and weld that in there and then the bracket is completely bolt in all right and here's this side I think I got my holes lined up enough got a neighbor dog that's having a conniption fit over there so hope you don't mind that I know our dogs will attack the attack whatever if they hear a barking sound on the TV or something they'll attack it so hopefully that doesn't happen to you all right there we go we got both feet on now so it's time to go see if it'll fit in the vehicle it just like that beautiful all right so it's in here sort of <laughs> and the good news is that you know everything shifts it's pretty cool that's great a um, little bit of a fitment issue um, the feet are a little bit too too narrow I can't show you the other side from where I'm at right now but when I turn it into position it's just hmm, I don't know probably half an inch too narrow so I think I'm going to weld some feet onto these feet so I have something it'll make it a little bit wider and it should be a great solution all right there you go feet and feet on this side so this gives me some a uh, um, little bit of wiggle room as to where I weld this on it um, because of the cables it doesn't want to sit totally straight and um, so it'll probably be just just a little bit canted to the passenger side which is totally fine so um, yeah so let's see how this goes
well, it is in and it is shiftable. Um, it's really hard to get good video inside the vehicle. It's so dark in there and I haven't figured out um, a better lighting situation for inside the vehicle. Fortunately, most of the work I'm doing is not inside the vehicle, but here we go. There it is. And uh, look at that. You can shift it, no problem. High and low. It's welded to the uh, the tunnel there. That is not going to come off unless I unbolt it, of course, which makes taking it on and off possible. And here's the other side. Um, four high. That would be rear wheel drive and then four low. So it all works great right here. Um, I don't think it's going to come off of there and that's good and it fits with the, the automatic shifter in there. So the, um, the center trim, uh, I don't know what that's going to look like, <laughs> but I'm sure I'm going to have to modify that a little bit and it's not going to look factory. It's not going to look really fancy to be honest. Um, I have never, I've never seen another FJ. I've never seen the, how other people have set up the shifters. So in this case, I'm just working with what advanced adapters sent me and, uh, making it work the best I can. And, uh, that setup will work great. And then maybe at a later date, I'll come up with something that is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but for now that'll have to do. So later on, I'll pull that back out, take it apart and, uh, paint it up. Um, I'm going to put some kind of, uh, ceiling uh, type rubber mat underneath it and back underneath the automatic shift here to make it weatherproof um, and then uh, should be good to go thanks for watching and i hope you got something out of today's video if you did give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already so that i can share new content with you every monday and thursday and so you can follow this build and uh, see how it goes and we'll see you next time